Hello there. Today I'm going to tie a fly that's called the one worm. This is a polychaete uh, pattern, um, uh, a type of fly that is normally uh, very, very difficult and, and takes an enormous amount of, of effort and uh, and fiddling about to, to make. But uh, but tying uh, a polychaete worm this way is is easy, fast, um, and uh, and uh, also you get a fly that looks like yeah. Uh, that is insanely alive in the water and looks extremely like the real thing. So, um, I've I've st I start out with uh, uh, a Chemco hook. Uh, this is the eleven uh, the eight hundred and eleven S, which is a, a fairly strong hook um, that I've uh, come to rely on quite a quite a deal, um, and uh, and it works works greatly. This is a size eight. <coughs> First off, we're going to tie in the tail. Uh, this hook is going to be the 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 one of two hooks, and this is going to be the the back end of the fly. So I take some marabou. Uh, this is uh, called Vulibaga marabou, and uh, and the color is scalp and olive, which which is a very good color for for this type of fly. Um, I take a small bundle of this, and I tie this in just like uh, any other tail, just like any other pattern, you know, like Vulibogas and stuff like that. So I tie this in just up near where you have your uh, little disc of uh, your little your little uh, metal head like that, and then you have you have your tail just to hide where I where I tied this in because this doesn't look very neat so far. I'm gonna take a little more of this marabou and just uh, dub it on the thread like this. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna make a whip finish. Like that. And then the first of the two hooks is done. You see, that wasn't very hard. I'm gonna put this aside for now. Okay, then I take another hook, and uh, this is the same hook, the L the 811th S, in, uh, but this is a size 6. And I'm gonna apply another metal head to this. Like that. Put it in the vise. Make a base of thread for all the materials to have something to grip uh, to hold on to. Like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of um, piece of fishing line, a piece of braided fishing line. It's not important uh, what brand of braided line this is. It's just important that its 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 color is 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 rather neutral or blends in nicely with the with the colors of the marabou we're going to use. And then it's important that it's strong because this is going to be the the link between the two hooks. So this has to hold at least. Um, at least uh, uh, some kilos because uh, if if you hook a big fish and um, and it's hooked on on the on the on the on the back of the two hooks on the on the the second of the two hooks you need this to be strong. So I'm going to tie this in. And I'm going to tie in it, it in double so I get a loop like this. And to be certain that this won't go anywhere, I'm going to tie this all the way up to the middle head, turn it over and tie it all the way halfway down again and then turn the rest of it a third time. So this is gonna stay where it's put. It's not gonna be ripped off um, in the middle of a fight with a fish. Like this. Okay. The trick now is, now you need to make um, a mix of marabou in Sculp and Olive some uh, glisten dub flesh in pearl and some marabou in brown. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm cutting off both sides of a marabou feather in brown. And this makes quite a mess. So if you have the option, you should definitely go outside to make this fly. And I'm taking a couple of these uh, sculp and olive um, feathers uh, as well like that and then I'm gonna rip the marabou of them as well put all this mess in a big pile down here take some uh, some uh, some flesh dubbing and then I'm gonna mix it up 
like this. And this is going to make a mess. I'm sorry to say so, but this is one of the most messiest flies ever. This, unfortunately, can't be avoided. Um, and that is the only and major setback about this pattern. Like that. I'm going to take a bit more of the brown. Like this. I rip it apart, turn it over, rip it apart, turn it over, rip it apart, turn it over, so I get all the materials nice and mixed up. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this now and I'm going to try to make it out to, um, to you know, a long, um, uh, roughly, roughly uh, uh, uniform um, width here and then I'm going to put it into, into my loop here, like that. I'm going to take a little more, like that. So you see now, I have uh, um, a loop um, where this marabou mixed with the, the dubbing is is uh, is put in, and uh, and this loop, the first part of this loop is approximately yeah, five or six centimeters, something like that. Then again, I'm going to take my dubbing twister, put it in there, and then turn it on, and this is going to make a mess as well. So you probably need to vacuum clean. So make a bundle of these all at one go, and then uh, and then vacuum clean after, like that. Then I'm gonna take my um, my hackle plier, and I'm gonna attach it to where my dubbing ceases to be, like that. Okay, I'm gonna take my dubbing reel out of the loop. So now all that is holding it in place is my uh, hackle plier. And then I'm going to take the other hook, the smaller hook, and put it through the loop here, like that. Push it all the way up to my hackle plier, and then I'm going to unwind this loop again. Unwind the loop again. So I'm going to get the loop to be opened once more. The reason for this is I'm going to make a second dubbing loop with the exact same dubbing um, and and then I'm going to... Well, well, it's easier to show you, I think. Like this, I'm going to take my dubbing twister, put it in there again and then I'm going to spin it the other way around so my my loop is getting opened again. You see? Like that. Oh well, almost like that. It needs a bit more. Like that. So now my dubbing. <coughs> oh, sh damn. Um, whatever you do, don't cough while you're sitting with, with all this marabou flying around. So now my dubbing, dubbing loop is, is open again. I'm going to take apply some more dubbing. Uh, to the second stage, all the way, all the way up to my, um, to my, um, to my hackle plier. And I'm gonna do that so that the first section is roughly, or if it, the best is if it, it is exactly the same length as the other one, like this, then I'm gonna take I hope you can see this like this, and uh, and th the the second hook hangs in between these two. Then I'm gonna take my uh, my dubbing twister again, and then it's very important that you spin it in the exact same way that you did the first one, like that. So now you have a very long, very long um, dubbing uh, dubbing loop with. <coughs> Oh, this marabou is, is um, annoying my nose. With uh, the smaller hook in the middle. Then you can take off your hackle plier. And you have the small hook in between the two. What happens now, as you take this and turns it over, is the two 
different uh, sections of this marabou dubbing loops will now twist into each other and actually fasten and make this fly stronger like this you can uh, you can help it a bit by um, by helping it to, to twist into one another what you do now is is you take the the rest of the dubbing loop like that and just tie it down up here cut it off but leave a fairly long uh, strand uh, hanging because we need to be certain that this goes nowhere so we need to tie this down uh, quite a lot of times all the way up to your uh, your gold head back again and of course forward once more like this and if you really want to be safe then turn it back one more time like this now you have a very now you have secured this this dubbing loop um, very very efficiently and you have the hook inside um, inside the dubbing uh, loop as well this is a bit too much material so I'm gonna pick out a little bit of it like this so it won't be quite as, as furry like this there's a little too much down here as well like that oops then I'm gonna make another dubbing loop take my thread all the way to the gold head and apply some more dubbing if I can find any more that that cough of mine was kind of <laughs> kind of horrible to, to what I had left here but well, there is some still here so I take the rest of the dubbing put it inside the the second loop this is just made from the tang thread picking up all the leftovers like that like that taking my dubbing reel if I can find it it's right here and make it spin like that take all of this turn it Tied down just gonna put this here so it's easier for you to see tied down cut it off make your whip finish And there you have it, the one worm. Um, the absolutely best, most logic, strongest, most alive uh, way of making a worm I have ever, ever encountered. This is just magnificent.